special evidence shows a very important determinant, uh, uh, long-run unemployment rates. So four and a half to five percent in Ireland was perhaps, you know, was probably just un unsustainable. So all, all three of these factors that contributed to this thing uh, clearly uh, eased off. Uh, so that's that's the labor market side of things. If you look at the productivity side of things, then uh, standard way to do this is to go through and assume some sort of production function. Uh, here's a compound production function. You can break labor productivity into two components. You can break it into a sort of capital deepening, so give workers more capital, and you can break it into what's called total factor productivity, which loosely translated is stuff you don't understand. Um, and, and using a very scientific uh, methodology, compound production function, so the data provided to you by the, uh, uh, by the central bank for capital input, uh, one can go and, and, and calculate this. Uh, I've got this chart here, which shows that, as is often, as is the case in most countries, year-to-year -year fluctuations in labor productivity are mainly due to uh, fluctuations in total factor productivity. But what we see is that in total factor productivity is, you know, from growth theory, we know that that's, that's the most important long-run determinant of the <coughs> potential output in the economy. And what we see is that the recent the fall off in total factor productivity has been even faster than fall off in, in, in overall productivity growth. And that's because the high rates of investment in the Celtic Tiger economy meant that the capital deepening component was quite strong. So the underlying total factor productivity of the Irish economy in recent years has been has been sort of not particularly impressive. In a way it's not hard to, 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 to understand why it's not particularly impressive. I know a lot of people want to talk about oh, the housing market and we've misallocated resources towards housing and other things, and that's probably, that's certainly going to be true, and there's an element of that. But of course, you know, what level of total factor productivity do people expect for our, you know, how fast were we going to grow? Here's PPP adjusted real GDP of Ireland growth to UK, US, uh, and the EU. I know there are lots of issues with GDP uh, and GMP. If you redid this and took 20% off, you'd still see that we've overshot. Uh, uh, Although I do think GDP is better than just uh, measure productivity. And even if you did this adjustment, you'd still see a kind of overshot the UK, overshot the EU. Ultimately, uh, it's, it's hard to think that total factor productivity in Ireland was somehow going to lead us to get a productivity level that just completely outstripped the world. A lot of the increases in total factor productivity that we were seeing came from catching up from being quite behind. And that process by 2007 had, you know, we had converged. Or as the slide says, perhaps we overshot. If you take the underlying background that you see in Europe, you know, if you say, okay, we've converged, well, are we going to go at the same rate as a normal European economy? Unfortunately, that's not good news. The Euro area economy in particular, here's some research I did with uh, Kira McGrath, uh, looking at up to end 2006 for the Euro area economy, two different ways of measuring potential. One was a kind of a peak to peak kind of 2000 to 2006. Uh, way to do it. The other was using the, the, the dreaded HP filter. Either way, we came out with measures of potential uh, output growth rate of the euro area economy of only 1.8%. Uh, and it's hard to imagine that data from 07 or 08, from 09, would, uh, would make those numbers pick up in any way, shape, or form. Putting it all together, I would say that as of 2007, even in the absence of housing meltdown and global financial crisis, there are probably there are a number of reasons to expect a substantially reduced growth rate uh, in the Irish economy. Employment to population ratio was likely to fall. TFP growth has been weakening. The underlying background level of TFP growth in the euro area economy uh, was pretty weak. And I think when we think about output gaps, we want to be particularly careful not to just sort of straight line where we were in 2007, not to straight line the trends that were prevailing in terms of GDP growth in 04, 05, 06, 07, and say, yeah, you know, that's where we were going to be. I think we were going to see a substantial flattening out anyway. So, you know, it's certainly going to be the case that, uh, you know, we started out with a very positive output gap, but we need to be careful and not be too optimistic about underlying potential and going back to calculating uh, uh, potential. So, you know, to be pessimistic here, just to sort of stand out, um, you know, I think it's possible that after a period of, of, of above average catch up growth, the potential of growth rate for Ireland may not be more than a sort of European norm of, of something in the region of, of 2%. Last thing structural budget deficits. What's a structural budget deficit? Basically, a structural budget deficit is what's the deficit you would get if output was at potential? We know that both government spending 
uh, increases with our book because you have to pay welfare benefits and, 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 and so on. Uh, and we know that taxes decrease, uh, or uh, taxes um, uh, fall when you, when, you, when you go into a recession. So either way, both on the spending side and on the taxation side, we know that higher GDP is good for deficits and falling GDP is bad for deficits. So, you know, we have a very large deficit and it is somewhat comforting to be able to say, well, you know, output is below potential. So let's just stick in the number for potential and see what, what, the, uh, what the underlying deficit is. And, you know, there's been a lot of uh, arguments out of the uh, economics commentary out suggesting that that's really, that really should be the focus of policy. You know, at the end of the day, we'll get out of this. We need to see what the underlying structural uh, budget deficit is. You know, what's the deficit when we're at the famous white star? Um, I, I'm skeptical of that due to the level of uncertainty that we have right now about what exactly uh, white star is. Beyond that, there's quite a re uh, body of research discussing mistakes that have been made in the past by policymakers based on that they thought they knew what potential output was and they got it wrong. Perhaps the best known uh, is uh, research is from my former Fed colleague, Athanasio Tocalides, now uh, uh, governor of the Bank of Cyprus, who showed that during the sort of great inflation period in the 1970s, so part of the problem was US policymakers, uh, both fiscal and monetary, thought that they were dealing with really big output gaps. Uh, so output one, output two hit the economy, kept going very, very slowly. And you, know, you can find real-time estimates from, this, from the Congressional Budget Office showing them you're running a huge output gap, and they thought the stimulus was what was required. But it turns out, in retrospect, we know that there was an underlying slowdown in productivity growth and potential output growth. And in fact, they weren't running big uh, output gaps. They were stimulating an economy that didn't, that wasn't capable of taking the stimulus, and the cause was the underlying uh, problem was, was, was inflation. I don't think that that's the issue here. I don't think there's a question of the Department of Finance overstimulating the economy right now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but the mistake we can make, it, you know, is a little different. Um, you know, I wouldn't rely too much on estimates of structural deficits. I think at the end of the day, actual deficits, you know, which is, you know, these are actual euros we own to actual people, uh, should be the target of, of fiscal policy and getting this down as much as possible from where we are. If we get the budget deficit down to five, six percent, maybe then we can come back in a couple of years and have a talk about uh, how much of the structure and how much of it isn't. Okay? I think a very technical subject of one level, but also quite relevant in terms of uh, fiscal policy as well. And I think what you brought out very clearly was both the importance of, of looking at this, but also the uh, health warning that uh, we should take this with grain of salt. And given the times we're living through, and particularly large grain of salt, uh, I think this possible to be recommended, is what you're saying. So I think just to keep us on time, I'll take a few questions for Carl, and then um, we'll ask Carl to address a number of them together. Ladies and gentlemen, here. Uh, Ronnie O'Toole, National Irish Bank. Uh, Carl, I, I'm interested in your discussion on productivity. Um, you talk about an approach to the US productivity, but obviously the US is 50 Ireland's uh, with different productivity. So if you had actually shown a distribution of the productivity by state in the US, what, you know, that's good news, bad news. We could become a good state and massively increase our productivity, or become a bad state and fall to much lower than we are. But this idea that we're somehow uh, uh, to borrow John's phrase, you know, in a short leash from U.S. productivity, the productivity of a very, very large area, I don't think is accurate. And you know, I think the game is to be played for. We could hugely overshoot or hugely undershoot, depending on if we do things right or wrong. And secondly, in terms of the fall in productivity in recent years, how much of that is just compositional? Uh, just that we had a lot of construction workers, and presumably, as we all get older, we're going to need, need more nurses. You know, that doesn't mean we're less productive. We just have more demand for professions which show from the economic statistics um, as being less productive. But you know, if you're old, you need a nurse. You don't need microchips. Uh, and you, you, that's what you have to uh, do. And finally, on the uh, export productivity side, if you read the work of the guys who focus on uh, exports, such as Seamus Grimes, Sean Cassidy, Frank Barry, they're quite complementary about the shift away from electronics and to other areas over the last seven or eight years. Is that not a sign that we have actually achieved quite a lot in this area and that actual productivity growth might be quite good? Okay, thanks for that. 
three questions in one. Uh, we'll just vote from the front.